Hello again, time for some more Year 13 Chemistry. Rate determining steps, so more within the rate reaction kinetics. Proper detail this time. Rate determining step. RDS will be the abbreviation from when I write it on the board often, just to save time. Can't call it that in the exam, got to call it by its proper name, rate determining step. Now, first of all, rate determining step need to understand it because rate determining step and mechanism massively important link so need to understand how the mechanism for a reaction ties into the rate determining step getting that right in terms of what does the mechanism mean is really therefore important mechanism means what are the steps within a reaction that allows you to get from reactants to products so therefore, it might be a series of small steps, it might only be one step, it might be two steps, you know, when anything's possible. You may well have heard of SN1 and SN2, you certainly will if I've taught you, and these are organic mechanisms. Nucleophilic substitution, termed unimolecular nucleophilic substitution. So the S is substitution, the N is nucleophilic, 1 stands for unimolecular. What is unimolecular? The rate determining step. This SN2 bimolecular nucleophilic substitution. So the rate determining step is bimolecular. What does that mean? Unimolecular means there's only one chemical species involved in the rate determining step. So there isn't technically a collision, it's something breaking apart. SN2, two distinct chemicals involved, so there is a collision this time. And there's always an activation energy as well, but activation energy... The A-level concepts with activation energy come in a different guise. They come in, uh, how do you determine the value of it? And that's the video that comes after this one. So if you want to know about that, what? Keep, keep waiting or keep wait, wait or watch or whatever you want. Now, one of the things I see people do is they get obsessed with SN1 and SN2. So they try and call all, mechan mechanism, all mechanisms SN1 and SN2. No, don't. Please don't. What you've got to do is you've got to remember SN1 and SN2 are organic chemical substitution reactions. Usually halogenoalkanes or alcohols. Those will be SN1 and SN2. If you're talking about gases like nitrogen oxide and oxygen reacting together in some way, those are inappropriate descriptions. Don't do it. Stick your SN1 and SN2 for your halogenoalkanes reacting or the alcohols reacting. Now, this here, this is a question. It's not a question I want to answer right now. It's a question that is underlying much of the A-level chemistry questions outside probably of multiple choice questions, and I could even imagine multiple choice questions having this, um, possibly. But most of the time the questions where there are a bit more extended answers say, does the proposed mechanism agree with the rate equation, or turn it inside out and do it the other way, or write it slightly differently, but that basic question underlies much of the A-level chemistry work to do with rate determining step. So does this link appear true or false? It's kind of like a hypothesis in that respect. So rate determining step, RDS as it will be termed so much of today's video. When you look at a series of steps in a mechanism, and there may not be that many, there may be two steps, one of them will be slower than the other. And it's the rate determining step and the slow step that we are looking for and how that ties into the rate determining step, step mechanism link. So whatever you've got, you've got a series of steps, one of them will be slow. If there's only one step, by definition it has to be the slowest. So this, the first step is the slow step as you will see when we do it. So, I think we need to get on to 
little bit more about what's going on. But before we go on to actual chemical examples, I want to get an analogy together for the rank determining step. Now, normally you would do this in a classroom with a series of people doing things, perhaps. Obviously, if you're not in a classroom, like we aren't in a video, we need an example. I'll get the board sorted for that and I'll see you in a moment. So just to get the idea of rate determining step, not in a chemical context, clear to you, because obviously if you're not really understanding it, when we put it in a chemical context, it's going to be a little tricky. So we're going to an analogise it to a factory. I'm going to do is car assembly, because we can all imagine cars being put together. Probably not all the ins and outs like you and me, because there's multiple steps. But if we just restrict it to three parts of the process of putting a car together, we've got three things. Engine fitting, which takes 20 minutes. Don't know whether these are right or not. Wheel fitting, 10 minutes. Bonnet fitting, 5 minutes. Okay, and I've written them again here in a different order. You'll see why. Let me just explain what happens. So these processes take place sequentially in the car factory. So you fit the engine, the car then moves down the production line and the wheels are done. The car, once the wheels are on, it moves down the production line and the bonnet goes on. So this is not all happening at the same time. These are happening in one place, in a assembly line what you do is you do the job and you send that once you finish the job you send it down the line to the next part of the process who then do their bit it was invented by henry ford back in the goodness knows when's a long time ago so what we're going to, got to do is think about this this is the analogy for linking something in your head to rate determining step so here, engine fitting is the rate determining step. Why is it the rate determining step? Because it takes the longest to achieve. That's what rate determining step means. If it takes longer to do the step, it's the rate determining step. So if you think of it in this order, what happens is here, the engine gets done for 20 minutes and then the car goes down the line, spends 10 minutes having its wheels fitted, five minutes having its bonnet fitted. There is no delay in that. The only, well, there is a delay. The delay is the engine fitting here. So here's the backlog. This is the thing that takes the longest. And then once the car goes on, you don't get a backup of engine fitted cars down this little part of the production process. So all the backlog appears when you're fitting the engine. And then once the engine is fitted, the wheels go on and the car goes straight on and then the bonnet gets fitted and it goes straight on. There's no backup. Now look at this order here because something different happens. All right, the car arrives, wheels fitted, 10 minutes. Then it goes on to have its bonnet fitted, five minutes. It's not about adding 10 and 15 together either. So this car goes down here and then before the next wheel fitted car arrives the bonnet has been finished and it's waiting to go onto the engine and it's in the engine fitting and then the next one comes down and the bonnet is fitted and it can't go into the engine fitting because it still hasn't finished its 20 minutes so there's a five minute backlog and all through the day that will keep building up so here this is the rate determining step and everything that follows it is fast here Fast, fast, faster, fast, faster, and then backlog builds up here. So these are two very different mechanisms in terms of what we will talk about in chemistry, where the slow step is. So this mechanism here, this step, backs up what you produce on the previous two steps. And you'll see that in the examples that we do in a chemical context. Here, the, the processing is slowed up here and then everything that follows it in this little sequence clears them out without there being a backlog because by the time you've had that 10 minutes by the time you fit the bonnet this one here hasn't even finished fitting the wheels so there's never going to be a build-up of unprocessed cars if you're not sure what i've said 
Go and look for some other examples. There are lots of examples about people putting a booklet together by hand with paper, selecting papers and shuffling them together and putting a staple down it and things. The stapling is quick, the shuffling is quick, but selecting one of each page is the very determining step. There are a number of other examples you could do. I need to go on to some chemical examples. So I need to get the board ready for that and I will see you when our first example is ready. So, first example, nothing to do with organic chemistry. Keeping it fairly straightforward, therefore. Uh, there's the balanced equation, that's why I've written BAL over there. Balanced equation. So, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen monoxide, carbon dioxide. Just uh, all gases reacting. Now, there are two proposed mechanisms. What seems to be a really obvious mechanism is NO2 collides with CO, and the result is it swaps over NO and CO2 are the product produced, and that's because it's the only step, the slow step, because there are no other steps. So as that matches that, it's like, oh, that seems obvious. But you need to test practically whether that actually is true because thinking about it is not enough you need the practical evidence of the rate equation now here's an alternative mechanism no2 collides with no2 you might think why well, but it will collide with each other i mean anyway even if they don't react together but no2 reacts with another no2 and forms a nitrogen monoxide and a nitrogen trioxide and then we're proposing that that's the slow step and then NO3 reacts with CO in a much faster reaction. I should have faster in under there, but oh dear. I have to pretend that's an F. And the product is NO2 and CO2. So we have converted what we need to do. We produce the CO2. Now, you might look at that and think, well, that's much easier. That's much more complicated. It'll be this one. This is what rate determining steps and rate equations, that link that they have, is really about. Here's the rate equation for this reaction. Second order, NO2. What that means, and this is absolutely the fundamental thing about rate determining step, is that That is true. So the rate determining step, meaning the slow step, if you remember, has to have just two NO2s. It doesn't have anything else. That's quite fundamental. So that tells you what the slow step is going to have in it. At least until we get on to more complicated examples when you'll see the backing up theory like the car mechanism manufacture thing. So here, two NO2s colliding has to be the slow step. That's this mechanism. This mechanism has one, this would have one NO2 colliding with one CO, so the rate equation would be different. The rate equation for that would be that. And that isn't what you find. That's not correct. This is the rate equation when you do the actual chemistry. So it is second order with respect to NO2. So this proposed mechanism fits with the rate equation. Remember that question that you keep getting asked. Now, therefore, that's correct. That's wrong in terms of mechanisms, first of all. There's one other thing you can do, and you sometimes do get asked to do this, is does the mechanism match the balanced equation? So what you do, is you go sequentially through it and anything that is on the right hand side and then reappears on the left hand side you cancel it out so NO2 NO2 NO NO3 so then we go NO3 oh that's on the reactant side there and the product side there and then NO2 is on the product side there and the reactant side there. And when you sum that together, you get NO2 and CO on the reactant side. Just what you have there. And you have NO and CO2 
just what you have there. So this mechanism also matches the balanced equation. We're going to go for another example. And I'm going to get the board sorted so that we can do it. See you in a minute. So, time for another chemical example. SN1 nucleophilic substitution, unimolecular nucleophilic substitution. So, 2-bromo-2-methylpropane is the organic and hydroxide ions. Now, if you remember the other video, you know that it's a 50-50 mix of water and ethanol as the solvent to ensure that you get this to dissolve. But the active nucleophile is OH- dissolved in water. The right equation for this reaction, when you use 2-bromo-2-methylpropane, it's just first order with respect to the organic, and I've shortened it to C4H9Br. Doesn't tell you the structure, but it, you will know that because we're talking about that. That's the molecular formula for the organic. Three possible mechanisms: slow and fast steps identified in each one. Now, there are reasons why one of the mechanisms is correct and the other two cannot be correct. And they underlie some of the important things. So this is a video where you should be taking notes. If you've just been watching it, you need to go back to the beginning, get your pen out, get some paper out, and you need to start writing stuff down because this is like underpinning your topic. Oh, you are. I'm so sorry. Didn't mean to uh, berate you for something unnecessarily. So if we look at this mechanism here, this is the correct mechanism. Okay, I'm going to tell you straight away that that is the mechanism that is correct. Why is it correct? When you look here, there is only one chemical as a reactant and it splits. And it's kind of, if you think about it, it's an unlikely thing to happen. It's a molecule just throws part of itself away. That'll make it slow. There are reasons why it does that. And if you go back to the mechanisms video, you'll know that it's about methyl groups pushing electrons towards the centre carbon. And then these two combine in a fast step. Now, you, you, I do see questions where it says, why would this be a fast step? It's quite easy. Positive ion attracting a negative ion, it's going to want to do it. So those two things, if they come near each other, they'll attract each other. It'll be a fast step. It's this dissociation that is the slow step. And that is the correct mechanism. Why? Because that's the only reactant in the slow step, one of them, and that makes it first order. Now let's examine why these two mechanisms don't work with that rate equation. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with the mechanism in terms of the chemistry. It's just it doesn't fit with the rate equation. So if you look at this here, this is a fast step. So this is not the rate determining step. The rate determining step is this and this combining according to this. Now I've already said that actually that's really going to be a quick step because of the opposite charges. But had it have been a slow step, what would have happened is that here is those two are formed. There it is. It's formed from that. So you would have for that you always have a K, you would have the, C, the C4H9Br being backed up by the slow step and then it needs to involve an OH-. And that's not the rate equation that the, getting the chemicals out tells you that you get. So that's incorrect because this mechanism is incorrect. Now there are times with a different structure when it's not a tertiary, because this is a tertiary halogen or alkane, or haloalkane, if your course calls them that. So this mechanism would have an OH- minus in the rate determining step, and therefore in the rate equation, and it would have that not in the rate equation, because that is formed from that, so it would be one of those and one of those. Not what you see when you do the actual chemistry, so it's not correct. This mechanism... Slow first, fast second, would have one of those and one of those. It would have this rate equation, as it turns out, because it would have one of those and one of those. And that's not what you find. So this mechanism is also incorrect because it doesn't match the rate equation, as does this one not match the rate equation. That's it. 
I need to move on to the next example, which will of course be um, SN2. See you in a moment. So here we are with our third example, SN2 this time. I needed to say from last time, the mechanism that we had for SN1 only applies to tertiary halogenoalkanes. This SN2 rate equation is going to be for primary halogenoalkanes. Where does secondary fit in? Secondary does a mix of SN1 and SN2, which means they don't ask questions about what's the mechanism for secondary. They only ask about S um, the SN1 mechanism for tertiary and the SN2 mechanism for primary. Pretty much, I can't imagine a situation where they'd ask about secondary other than why is it indecisive and that's because it's a mixed mechanism it does some of them react in the SN1 some of them react in the SN2 way so here's a, a simpler question in in reality that one bromobutane this time so it's the same molecular formula it's just an isomer of the um, tertiary one we had in the previous example this is the rate equation now you'll recognize that rate equation from the other example as incorrect for SN1 Turns out it's correct for SN2. Here's why. The, this is the question that I said you'll get asked from many of the questions. Does the rate equation match the mechanism? And here's the mechanism. First step is a slow step. That combines with the OH minus. Why is that a slow step? What's I mean there is has to has to be an attraction, but it's not a complete charge, complete charge attraction. It's now only a partial charge, complete charge attraction, so therefore it's a bit slower. And so you form this intermediate species with the lengthening Br bond and the long bond to the oxygen. So this is that transition state in the mechanism that you had from the mechanism video. So these two combine to form that. That's the slow step. This then dissociates and loses the Br- minus and forms the alcohol in a fast step. Does that match that rate equation? The answer is yes, here's why. Because the slow step as reactants has one of those and one of those. So that would be first order, first order. And there it is, first order and first order. That's it. Does it match? Yes. We need to move on to more complex examples where we get the backing up like in the car manufacturer model that I was talking about earlier. But obviously I need to get the board ready and I'll see you in a moment. So, more complex mechanisms. Now we're out of organic. Please don't be talking about SN1 or SN2 again. It only applies to those halogenoalkanes. So here's a relatively uh, simple looking reaction. Carbon monoxide reacting with chlorine producing this. This is called phosgene, unpleasant chemical. You don't want to come into contact with that. And so as what seems to be a straightforward mechanism would be one of those reacts with one of the, you know, they both collide with each other and you get that. So that would be a rate equation of first order with that, first order with that. But you don't get that. So here's the rate equation that we are proposed, that we find. It's second order with respect to chlorine, first order with respect to carbon monoxide. So does the mechanism agree with the rate equation? Here's the proposed mechanism. So there are the three steps. Chlorine dissociating into two chlorine free radicals or atoms. And then one of those chlorine atoms reacting with carbon monoxide to produce this species, COCl. That then reacts with a further chlorine radical in a slow step to produce COCl2. Now... Does that mechanism agree with the rate equation? Well, are you having to think? Here's what happens. If you look here, these two chemicals are the reactants for the slow step. So that has come from this here. And that has also come from that there. That is produced from the second step and the carbon monoxide is an actual reactant. So what you would have is two chlorine radicals which is produced from one Cl2. So you get the two chlorine radicals, one for that one, one for that one, from the chlorine two. So it would be what have you backed up of the actual reactants, because that's not a reactant, that's not a reactant, that's not a reactant. They're intermediate species. 
you've backed up that reactant and that reactant. So it would be one of those and one of those. But the rate equation tells you that you need two chlorines. So the answer, what does it back up? Is it backs up one carbon monoxide and one chlorine because to get Cl free radicals you need to split apart just a single chlorine molecule to produce the two free radical chlorines that you need, one for step two, one for step three. So that's what's backed up. So the answer is that no, it doesn't. There we go. We can also just do this balanced equation checking thing. Anything that's uh, on both sides, so COCl is on both sides there. CO is not anywhere else. Cl2 is not anywhere else. Two chlorine radicals. There's one. There's another one. Cl2, CO on the reactant side. CO, Cl2 on the product side. So that mechanism is a valid mechanism for this balanced equation. But it's incorrect because the rate equation says there will be two chlorine molecules and a carbon monoxide. And that mechanism only, only backs up one CO and one Cl2. Answer was no. Balanced equation check done. Ready for the last example, which obviously I need to get the board ready for. I will see you in a moment. Okay, last example. Non-specific this time, in order to get out of the, the chemicals out of the way in terms of real identities. So just some random letters that don't represent anything other than H plus can be a, obviously a hydrogen ion. So this is the overall equation. So that overall equation says that Q reacts with 3G and 3H pluses and you get 2Js and 3H2Os. So quite a complex set of interchange of various atoms going on. Here's a five-step mechanism, so it's a bigger mechanism than any of the ones we've had before. Now I have to say something here about how A-level treats these kind of questions. Because what we are doing in example four, also mentioned earlier when we had a backup mechanism, is that we are treating fast steps as they just go. The reality is that these would be equilibria and that makes a whole massive difference to the rate equation you actually get, but that is beyond the scope of A-level. So if you get a mechanism this complicated, Equilibria are ignored. If you include equilibria in this and the equilibrium constant, and yeah, they all tie together, to be honest, what happens is you get fractional orders. So if you get fractional orders in a rate equation, it means equilibria has taken place in the mechanism. That is beyond the scope of A-level. So we're going to keep it that we keep it simplistic in that these are fast and there are no equilibria involved in any of the steps. That's the first thing. Now we've got that elephant in the room out of the way because the real world is slightly different to what we're doing here. This is complicated enough for A-level, quite frankly. So we have a five-step mechanism. Fast step with an H plus joining with a G, fast step with an H plus joining with a Q, and then the H and H G plus and the H Q plus join together, and that's the slow step. I want to ask you the question, why is three going to be the slow step? Because these here are fast, because the, uh, there's only ever one slow step in a mechanism, or the slower of them, whichever ones there are. There's only ever one that's the slowest. Why is that the slowest? Think. Why is it the slowest? It's really obvious. No, it is really obvious. Have you thought of it? Because two positive things, HG plus and HQ plus, they're going to repel from each other. It's going to be like, I don't want to go together. So the chances of them impacting with it enough collision energy to overcome the repulsion is you know, less likely. That'll make it the slow step, won't it? So here is the slow step and it produces this H2O and three T's, whatever T's are. Obviously not very complicated, I would imagine. And then you mop the mechanism up with a T and a G, make it a J and a... And a yeah. 
T and an H plus making water, two waters. So the first thing is does the mechanism match the balanced equation? Now you look at that and go, I have no idea, then you need to take it logically. Remember, it is about, I'll change the colour of the pen, what appears on the right and then appears on the left later. So that appears on the right and then on the left later. Similarly, so does that. T appears there, it appears there. Oh, they don't match. But the answer is to double up one of the steps, four or five. Turns out it's this one needs doubling. Because you need to produce two J's, which is there. So you do have to kind of think your way through. So then, what have you got? Does it match H plus, H plus, H plus? There's the three H plus. G, G, but that's doubled, so that's two G's there and another G there. That's the three G's. Q, just the one there. So all the reactants match. Come over here, two J's. There's the J, but it's doubled up, because I've said step four is going to take place twice to allow us to have two J's. And then we have to have three waters. There's one, there's the other two. And the three T's go, because two there, one there. So it does much more complicated. So the next thing is state the rate equation for this mechanism. So I'm not asking you does it match now, I'm saying what would the rate equation be? So the two fast steps at the end don't come into the rate equation dis discussion. So you need to then write the rate equation. I'm going to get you to have a go. So pause me and have a go at what this rate equation is going to look like. So you're looking at what's backed up by the slow step. You need to pause me, and when you've had a go, unpause me, and all will be revealed in glorious red pen, because it's red. Okay, so you've had a go, and what do we have? So we have to, this is the two species we have to produce. So what we have to do, right, Obviously, the standard setup with a equal, with a rate constant. So we have to have an HG. An HG is produced by an H plus and a G. An HQ plus is produced by an H plus. So there are now two H pluses and a Q. So that mechanism, on our simplistic A-level terms, where these are not equilibrium arrows, we have this rate equation. If the rate equation isn't that, when you do this for experiment for real, then the mechanism is incorrect. So there we are. Now, that is significantly more complex than any of the other examples. Finally, I just want to say... So what comes next is again another, in terms of these videos, another really important uh, feature of re reaction kinetics topics at A-level, which is what happens with activation energy. Because you've had activation energy at GCSE, what's the difference at A-level? We actually work it out. But there's a set of skills that you just need to apply for that, and we'll do that in another video on another day. So there we are. Right, you Rate equation tied to rate determining step. If you need to back it up and watch it again, maybe that's a good thing. There are some questions that accompany this of different, le differing levels of complexity. And the answers will be obviously there as well. That's it really. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video about activation energy. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.